Hello, loves, and welcome to Tea Time with Monica. Today, we are talking to plus size model and confidence coach, Trisha Campbell. Now, I met Trisha back in 2017, so we've been on a good little journey. I met her at the TCF Style Expo in Atlanta. This girl is wonderful. She's just a bright, beaming, genuine soul, so I had to get her on here to talk about her confidence coaching, but let me give you some tea on her. Now, besides being a plus model, she's an entrepreneur who is changing the game through her swimwear line, Glamour Glamour Swimwear. Now, if you guys haven't seen it, it's some bold, beautiful, beautiful colors. And the way it just accentuates the sexiness of it, I love, love, love this line. You have to check it out. I know you guys are still going to be going on vacations, even when it gets cold. I know it's COVID, but we're doing it safely. So, but she takes pride in advocating for women to feel more beautiful and confident with themselves. Trisha has dealt with some fat shaming. If, I mean, how? She's beautiful. But she has dealt with fat shaming by one of her mentors. And after losing her mom, which I'm so sorry to hear. I don't know when this happened, but I am still sorry to hear that because that's a tough thing to go through. From colon cancer, she realized that beauty should come from the inside. So she changed her mindset, prayed to God, and through help from her life coach, recognized how to unleash her inner beauty and confidence. So she took the steps of becoming a life coach to help other women. And Trisha has started a Facebook group and a program, Confidence Queens. We're going to get to that. But let me welcome Trisha. Hello. Yes, I love. Thank you for being on today. I'm so happy. I just love her spirit. Look at it. Look at it. Like, y'all, you guys who are looking at the YouTube, you got to see her spirit. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Now, I want to begin with this quote because I think this will really set the tone for our conversation. It is by Beyonce, Queen Beyonce. The most alluring thing a woman can have is confidence. Now, how does this quote speak to you in your work, Trisha? Wow, the most alluring thing that a woman can have is confidence. That is definitely the truth because confidence gets you everything in this world. Without confidence, you don't feel like you want to wear that dress, go on that date, level up in your marriage, get that career that you always wanted, travel the world. I mean, I could go on and on, mm -hmm. um, you know, about the things that you will not achieve if you don't have confidence. Right. And of course, you know, the men, they could feel it a mile away when you are not confident. Let's just stop right there. How men or just anybody you're trying to bring into your world can feel your lack of confidence if you're lacking or even if, or feel your confidence if you just have that confidence. How that, so that vibration just brings the right or wrong people into your space, right? Oh, yes, because everything is energy. And uh, I remember this life lesson when I just moved to New York and I started modeling. I remember I went on my first big casting. It was from Macy's. Mm -hmm. And I get in the elevator and I'm like fidgeting with myself. This is like 15 years ago when I was a model, but I thought I was never enough. I thought I was not deserving enough, not worthy enough. And I get up in the elevator and the casting director is sitting right in front of the elevator door and I'm there oh my God. so the elevator opens and I'm looking like a little squirrel with headlights and she was like thank you for coming please step back in the elevator and I never forgot that so oh I gosh. tell this to ladies all the time no matter where you are it's not about being fake it's about having that inner beauty and confidence from within no matter what you're going through what the weather is like you're just exuding your confidence yeah. yeah, you do. You have to do it. It has to drip all over you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you talked about the, you know, just this one instance, but let's talk about your journey and how you got on this purpose and path of helping other women be the confidence queens that they could be, you know, with fat shaming. Oh, we hear about this so much. Oh yeah. So, um, of course I'm a plus size supermodel still am. 
and uh, work with Oprah Winfrey. I've been, you know, I've walked on many different runways all around the world. And women would always ask me, they're like, oh my God, you're so confident. Where do you get this confidence from? I want some <laughs> of this confidence. And I was coaching women, not even knowing that I was coaching. And then I was doing some modeling coaching too, which is a little bit in my program too. Mm -hmm. And um, during the pandemic, I said, you know what? I want to reach out to more women. And no, I can't travel as much. So I want to set up a one-on-one -on -one signature program, a 90-day program where women could come in and definitely transform their lives. Because, you know, I, when I look back, I'm like, I wish I had like a coach or a mentor, right. someone who could have helped me not only with my career, but life lessons, health-wise, career-wise, relationship-wise, yeah. just like a life coach, you know, and all of that. So that's why I, I started um, definitely coaching women. And I'm so passionate about it. It's yeah. so important. It is. And you think about the time that we've had now just sitting at home through this pandemic and everything that's been going on in the world this past like year and a half. So, you know, it feels like forever sometimes as we yes. keep hearing all this stuff. But just thinking about how people are just sitting back and just thinking about all those aspects that you, think, you, you talk about in life, like your career, your health you know, your love life or, you know, anything, just your family life, your life for you, your self-care. And yeah. you say, you know what? I've got time. I've got time to sit here and help other women get to where I am and showing the light that I've found in myself. Yes. Yeah. You know, I tell my clients all the time, if you want your best life and just remember back when you were a little girl and or a little kid for, you know, guys to what did you really dream of? What was your ultimate dream? The life that you wanted, all of this. And as you said, with the pandemic, it really let us a lot of us sit back and say, you know what, but I really wanted to live in Israel. Maybe mm -hmm. I wanted to live in Africa. I wanted to go back to Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. So a lot of people started to do a lot of soul searching, but then they found there was blockages. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, that's another thing I teach in my 90 day program where you have to clean away those blockages, which is the toxic beliefs that we were taught and that's mm, kind of that's the hold on let's just this just stop right there the blockages and all the toxic you know people it's like you all see on instagram about you know toxic people in your life but you don't think about the to toxic thoughts that you have on your own right yes so how do how do you deal with that how do you like give me one example of how you help someone with that so without giving away too much, that's it. No, no, we don't want you to give it away all though, because we need people to be in the program. But I just, I just want to give them a little, look, give them a little drop of, give them a little. A little drop, a little drop. So you have to. There's something because I work mostly with women. So there's something called, uh, first of all, working on your energy leaks. Mm. So for those who don't know what that is, you have to look it up or contact me, and we'll talk about it. It is just clearing out your immediate space. It could be from your phone, car, different things. That's one thing that, you know, you could, because what, if you're living in clutter, your whole life is clutter and you're wondering why things are not changing, why things are not happening, why am I not getting this, booking the jobs, getting all this stuff that I want you have to clean out your energy leaks. That's one. Mm -hmm. Number two, a lot of professional women, you know, we walk in something called masculine energy. If you're a career woman, you went mm -hmm. to college, you're like, oh my God, I have to get this. I have to, you're always in your male energy. So that's another thing that I teach. It's called feminine energy, how to walk in it, how to live in it and how to gravitate everything to you. Shining, you know, beautiful. You know, I, I I do like that you're teaching women how to walk in their feminine energy because I feel like society does not focus on teaching us how powerful our feminine energy is. And that's why, you know, like you said, a lot of career women are walking in male energy and then they don't understand why they're unhappy. And, yeah. you know, they're walking in the masculine instead of, you know, maybe mirror you know kind of having that yin and yang that balance of the mm -hmm. two but understanding that your feminine energy is that powerful 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Feminine energy is, you know, as I said, this is why I'm passionate about coaching women, because years ago I was in a crazy relationship. So when you're walking in your male energy, you put up with relationships that are taking you nowhere. They're not good for you. You know, you put up with all kind of craziness because you are literally almost a man competing with a man. Oh, we don't think about that. Right, because you're so like, you know, yeah. so uh, imagine a man does not want to be with another man. If he wanted that, well, some men do, but this is not, a, that's not the, what it is right now. A man wants a feminine, nice woman. And I'm yeah. not saying you're going to be a pushover. You're not going to be all dolled up all the time. That's not what feminine energy is. Feminine energy is receiving and knowing your womb power. So that's that's a little twinkle. Ma- out ma'am, 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 that womb power. Y'all better come to her to this Confidence Queens program because she is dropping knowledge and all this these little triplets. Y'all, she's sipping that tea with y'all. Get there because once you learn that feminine energy, that womb energy, there's nothing nobody can do with you. I mean, you are just going to be exuding and dripping this confidence. Yes, and tap, and and you'll have you'll exude your inner beauty because you will know exactly who you are and why you're here. And I'm also a believer in God, and I know that as women we are fearfully and wonderfully made, right? And yeah. nothing can stop you once you know that fact. Yeah, you're right. Like I'm, I'm loving this. I like that you have come into this, come into your own with this. I mean, like I said, dealing with fat shaming, now we hear about this so much, even in society now, you know, I know you've been on, <laughs> on the back end of it for years in the fashion world, but even like when you think about someone like Lizzo, because you know, she's the big name with her coming out with this new song rumors with Cardi B and getting all this backlash about how she is and how she like has her sex appeal as a, as a you know, full figured woman. And that's just like, people shame her for that. How do you deal with that? Or how do you like, how do you see that in society now? Like, crap, here we go again. (laughs) Yeah, it all comes from the internal part of, I just uh, actually talked about this on my uh, Facebook live Mm -hmm. last week about, you know, are you internalizing your own body shame? And a lot of us internalize our own body shame without even knowing it. We hear about, you know, the external fat shaming where people right. fat shame us like, you know, what Lizzo is probably going through right now. But the reason why even our own people, some like our own plus size women will fat shame each other is because they're, you're internalizing your own ma'am and you have not addressed it okay ma'am so if you have not addressed it what what the the hurts that are on the inside of you they're gonna bleed out and where are they gonna bleed out onto most of the time people who look like you 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 know what it's crazy because my friends that i've gained in the plus size community and the plus size industry we talk about this all the time where people are like oh i'm you know i'm slim, you know, slim thick, or you're big, you know, having the different hierarchies. And it's like, why do you even have that? Or just shaming someone if they choose to go through, you know, um, the, the surgery, you know, to lose weight, you know, because of health reasons, you don't know why people make certain decisions. And because you feel like, oh, I can't do this, or I'm this way, and I should be happy. And you're so much on the hurt, like you said, from everybody else, and you're internalizing and then you pour it back out. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, that we are really taking our trauma Mm -hmm. because a lot of us have been through a lot of trauma. So I also work with my ladies on healing their inner girl. And your inner girl still walks with you until this day. If you don't want to believe it, (laughs) that's on you. Honey, I can give you facts. She's facts. It does. That little girl inside is always there. Oh, yeah. So if you're not apologizing to her and if you're not giving her what she needs, she's going to run your life. Mm. So you have to learn how to address your inner girl first and foremost, because she is just going to be like 
Can you uh, like you know celebrities who have money or you know are a line a what they call it a top celebrities right uh -huh. now? Who if they have a dress their inner girl? When they become really famous, you really see their inner girl. Their inner girl is like, ah, I want to come out and play. Like this is the woo, like the, like like Lizzo. Like that, her, that's her inner girl right now. Like all over her. Like mm -hmm. if she doesn't know how to control her inner girl, it's like oh my god, it's like a whirlwind. Because right. she's just, her inner girl is having the time of her life. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to know how to control your inner girl. Because if not, your inner girl is going to control you. And it's mm -hmm. not going to be pretty. Oh. You don't talk, people don't think about that. They really don't think about how that, like you said, the inner girl is going to control you. And sometimes it can get to a point where it's just like everything falls apart because you don't know how to turn, have it on and turn it off or let it, like I said, be a balance. Be a balance. Yeah. Let your inner girl inspire you, but not control you, right? Right. That's the that's definitely the fact. And um, there are different, you know, techniques and strategies that you could do to really live on a balanced life with your inner girl. You're not throwing her out the door. <laughs> You're not casting her out. You're embracing her, letting her feel loved and all of that and respected and apologizing. It's very important. Let me say this to your audience. It's very important to apologize to your inner girl. And this is why you need a coach, because we're here to help you to acknowledge all these different things. And I, as I said, you know, the, the we have had trauma toxic things that happen and if you don't address these things you know what's going to happen your life is going to keep going in circles you're going to accept mm. the bad relationships you're not going to go after your goals you're going to think that i'm not worthy i'm not deserving i'm not enough no i'm here to tell you that you're enough because you're a queen you're worthy and all of that but if you do not know how to put new habits in place put new tips in because you know living that life that you want that dream life it takes work but once you put your once you have your goals your long-term goals your short-term goals in place and have these habits going on and it's like nothing it's like taking a shower your life will never be the same yeah you gotta clean it up you gotta clean it up now let's talk about this like you know, all of that leads to like, when you're not feeling sexy, when you're not feeling up, you feel less sexy. You, you know, you just, the sexy doesn't exude in you. And sometimes <laughs> I always tell people like, when I feel confident is when I feel sexy, when I can look in the mirror and be like, damn girl. Yeah. I want my own self, you know, like when I can look in that mirror, whether it's an outfit, I've got on some lingerie or, you know, I'm just stepping out of the shot. I'm like, okay, today mm -hmm. you are giving all of that, you know, yeah. all is, how do you help people get there? Because there are so many women who have dealt with all, like you said, the self-shaming, the outer, outer shaming, or their vibration is so low that they don't feel sexy. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to feel sexy, you have to I get this a lot with, uh, you know, a lot of my clients, a lot of my clients who come to me are black women. Mm -hmm. And for many years, of course, all our lives, we have been, you know, the men have been brainwashed. We have been brainwashed to think that our body type is not beautiful. There's something wrong with our curve in our back, with a hump in our butt, with mm -hmm. the bellies that we have, the thick thighs that we have, you know, so you have to retrain your mind and when if you don't do that no matter how much plastic surgery how much you starve yourself mm -hmm. how much you know injectables all this stuff if you still have not changed your mindset about your body image you will never be happy yeah you know I was just you will never feel sexy you won't I, I was just talking to somebody about that like how women who were you know maybe bigger before and they lose weight or whatever however your body changes once you try to put on those new clothes, you still see that person it, because it's psychological. You still see that person in the mirror. So even when you go to buy new clothes, you can't even be comfortable in your new skin. No, 
You, you still can't be because the, the brain is still triggering. It's still saying you're fat. You have cellulite. That don't look right on you. People are talking about you. It's still, you know, that chatter is still in your mind. So you have to definitely clear that out. And how you have to clear that out? Come to Confidence yes. Quiz. Hey, yes. <laughs> so how often does the program run? Like, is it, you, you know, is it every... 20 days, 30 days, 40, like how do you run it and how often? So it is a one-on-one -on -one program. So when I get filled up, because it's only me, I'm coaching and I love to, people ask me, oh, Trisha, when are you going to do a retreat? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Group coaching. And I really believe in one-on-one -on -one coaching right now because everybody's that individual. And I feel like people are more vulnerable. They're more, you know, they feel more comfortable on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. So enrollment is anytime until I get really crazy booked mm -hmm. for the next month. So now I'm still taking enrollment for September. And I have two programs, actually. I have the 90-day signature program, which mm -hmm. is, um, it's like six weeks, uh, three months. Mm -hmm. It's at three months and you get like two set of coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching for three months. So it's six sessions there. And I love that program because in the program, you get time to process and time to really set the new habits in place. And I'm here as your accountability partner to find out if everything is going well and all of that. You get support. Also, you can DM me anytime when you're in a program, all of that. And then, you know, there's this woman who are busy, who are maybe going for a certain interview, trying to transform their jobs, trying to do something really fast. I have a fast track four week program too, where, um, yeah, I could get you like getting you into certain habits and rhythms right away to start you out. So I, I have that program also. So, th so audience, this is for everybody. You choose what works best for you. Yeah. There in either of those programs, if you need the fast track, if you need the 90 day, maybe start with the fast track just to, you know, explore. And then mm -hmm. maybe you feel like, you know what? I really do need that 90 day. So yeah. guess what, Trish? After we finish this for a week, I would take a little break. Then I'm going to sign up for this 90 day audience. You can do this because yes. your confidence is important. Now, is there homework, Trisha? Oh yeah, there's, there's work. This is, it, it's called tapping into your inner beauty. Mm -hmm. and unleashing your unshakable confidence. So you're going to have to be one, committed, and two, you're going to have to be ready and you have to going to be open and mm -hmm. ready to change your life. It's not a joke. And the second module, I call it, the second coaching session is very emotional. Mm -hmm. So I'm just here to warn you. It's fun. I'm a fun person. It's great. But I think with a lot of us, even with me, mm -hmm. because I, you know, I went through a lot of coaching. I've had many different coaches in my life and it really helped me tremendously. And I think a lot of us shy away from this because we get busy. We get into that busy mind because mm -hmm. you know what? You don't want to feel. We are human beings. You have mm -hmm. to feel, feel the pain and do it anyway. You yeah, have but to you know, society it. teaches us Society is trying to, even with social media, it's trying to teach us we don't need to feel. Even with relationships, you know how it's all like, oh, I don't need you. Oh, I'm bad all by myself. You're this, you're that. And never even taking that, that look at self or feeling anything. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost like society has made us become numb and numb to each other, yeah. numb to relationships, numb to ourselves first. And that's why I love this hashtag self-love because it is so important to really sometimes just sit back and ask yourself the question, you know, what do I, Trisha Campbell, want? What do I want? Like, you know, how am I feeling today? Like, literally, how am I feeling today? If you're mm -hmm. feeling nervous, if you're feeling scared, there's nothing wrong with that. Cry if you need to cry. Cry if you need to scream. Ah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> For God's sake, scream, cry. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, you can't hold all that in. Once you hold all that in, it's going to tear you up. And I came from a family where I'll tell you right now, we hold stuff in. And it, it's just, it was, it's just never. Man, I have gotten to my family functions in the last month or so. And I have told my, fa I have, I am here with my quota of the family secrets that I no longer want to hear like, if you held it in, if I held it, look, 
I am here. I'm going to go to therapy. I've been to therapy. You know, I'm here with it. I, I can't deal with it anymore. I'm going to heal what I need to heal for me. You yeah. go heal you. Let's not bring up this trauma anymore mm-hmm. and let it rule us. Let's, yeah. Let's move through it. And as, you know, as women, we tend to be, oh, I want to be the mother. Oh, I want to help you. I want to help this one. And who is helping you, ladies? So you have to set up what? Boundaries. Yes. And not feel help. guilty about it. You have to set those boundaries. So in order to do that again, sorry for the shameless plug. But yeah, I had to learn the hard way to where it came to family, friends, all that stuff, trying to be the socialite, trying to have everybody trying to love you, like you. Not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to like you. And you have to be okay with that. So you have to set those boundaries. Yeah. I, I, I was just talking to my cousin last night. I was like, you know, people are in your life for seasons. And sometimes you just have to, you, you may have to mourn them leaving you. But then once that morning is over, you have to realize why they were there. What lessons were they there to teach you about yourself or and about life? Appreciate the moment that you have with them, cherish the good times and move forward because you're yeah. not going to know everyone that you meet for the rest of your life. No, definitely. And the, even family, you're not going to know, you know, it, it may change. The relationships yeah. may change. And that's the hard part when it comes to family, because family knows you best. So when someone knows you best, they could hurt you the most too. Yeah. So you have to be very, very careful with all of that too. Yeah, Yeah, you do. You definitely do. Mm -hmm. Do do you work with affirmations to help people work through these things? Oh yeah. So affirmations are definitely something that helps you to change your mindset because you have to feel it. You have to see it. And there's another thing that you have to do, but that's too much giving away. What's no, we, we're not going to give away this whole program. I'm just, it's like I most, said, it's the tidbits. Part, uh-huh. <laughs> it's the tidbits we want to give to get people yeah, over to you. The most powerful part of it. But yeah, affirmations. And what it is, the why I love, and I it's proven that one-on-one coaching works much better than group coaching Mm -hmm. is because as I said before one we are all individual we all have individual problems individual goals and you Mm -hmm. want individual results you don't need to have your best friend results goals problems shared amongst each other no you are an individual you're unique as I say you're wonderfully and beautifully made you're anointed for your own purpose and you have to know what your individual purpose is so that's why one-on-one coaching is so so amazing so back to the affirmations so the affirmations have to align with your listen Mm -hmm. with your desires and goals Okay, so if you want to be a millionaire, you can't sit there and say, oh, you know, I don't have enough in the bank. No, Mm -hmm. so it's not aligning with your desire. So you would say, I am a millionaire. Everything I touch turns to gold. You know, all those uh, different things because you want to be a millionaire, billionaire. You're not going to say, oh, but I don't have enough in the back. No, you're impregnating your mind because you are, you, you're seeing it before it even happens. Yeah. So that's the power of individualized desired affirmations. Mm, I like if that. you want to be married and all of that, you're going to say, oh my God, I'm in a loving relationship with my husband. If you want kids, oh, I am taking my kids to school right now all of that so it's you're living in the I am it's not the what if shoulda coulda do that no it's I am capable of love I am love I am beautiful I am sexy I'm successful it's okay for me to ask for what I want all of that stuff no place or thing has any power over me you know all these great solid powerful affirmations that you can say it's mm-hmm. less fear and more power invoking, yes. more of you taking control of what you want, seeing it, believing it, and having faith. Definitely, yes. Because what, how lack of self-esteem, low confidence, how it starts is really the fear. It's yeah. fear creeping in. 
Yeah. That's what low self-esteem and no confidence, low confidence is. It's definitely fear living into that side. Like, oh my God, I'm fearful of this and all this stuff. That's where, so you have to break the fear. Yeah, you definitely do because fear will keep everything out of you. And oh, then yeah. it'll make you angry that you can't touch that. You, you know, you want it, but you're so fearful of going to get it. And then you can't, you can't get it. Like I see it, but I can't touch it. Yes. And then Let me angry. tell you a quick story. I remember yeah. the first time I was going to travel by myself. Mm-hmm. And, um, we're, oh yeah, I was going to South Africa. And I remember my mind was running a mug. I call it the stinking thinking. This is where you got to cut that stinking thinking. My mind was saying, Trisha, what if you get there? Nobody meets you at the airport. What if you don't speak the language? What if they don't take your pass? I mean, I was thinking about every negative thing. And sometimes you don't even realize what is coming way back from your past. Hearing your parents talk about things in a certain way. That's why some people are even scared to fly to this day because as a little kid, you know, your parents are family. Oh my God, you heard about that plane crash and you're a little kid. Mm-hmm. And you're not even knowing that this you're internalizing this thing. And it's, it's uh, as an adult, you're terrified to fly now, but it's coming from way back when, because you were traumatized, yeah. right? So if you don't know how to break the fear, you are going to be stuck in everything, every part of your life. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned flying because I, I don't like to fly, but I do. I do travel here and there, but not as much as I'd like to. But I tell people all the time, they're like, so why don't you like, I'll get on the boat. I get on the train. I can walk, run. I can swim. I, I don't have wings to fly. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that is, <laughs> that's, it's a reality thing with me. Like, wait a minute. If something happened, I don't have these wings. And I don't want to gain the wings just <laughs> But no, I, yeah. I do fly. I've gotten over that fear and I do fly. I don't like long flights. So it's just, you know what? Take a melatonin or something. I go to bed. I've, I've found a way to get through it, but it's just- Oh, I'm happy for you. That is awesome. So how does that make you feel? Are you, you feel great now? Um, yeah. No, I haven't traveled in this past year just because of, you know, the pandemic and, and COVID. And I, you know, I wanted to go to Jamaica for my birthday <laughs> like, I know I know I said the back of your head. And, you know and I didn't go and it was because my dad um had to have a tumor removed from his left kidney yeah I've got um, I know that audience I haven't really talked about that we're I'm really just opening up right now about that but that's part of you know part of the reason was like I was glad I didn't go because dad had to have surgery but the other reason was my sister wasn't going to be able to go and I don't celebrate big milestone anything without my sister she's my only sister and it's going to be celebrated that big without my sister and my sister cousins you know by my side oh okay and, um, and because of the pandemic they just couldn't travel and but Jamaica's on the list for next year okay oh <laughs> yeah we will get Definitely. there we, we have promised each other look we got a lot going on at the end of 2022. Uh, We're going to Jamaica, okay? Oh, yeah. Jamaica, oh, that is one place I have to go. The food, the energy, the music, the, oh. Mm, the I've people. Yes, the I've got Can we to... talk about the nature? Yeah. I mean, Jamaica is known for the pretty beaches, but one thing that a lot of people don't know that we have amazing rivers. We have amazing hot bats like natural warm bats that you mm-hmm. can just go in that's flowing down from the mountains that we have like all these waterfalls you could swim with the dolphins or oh, bobsledding ride the horses in the water I mean yeah. it's just an amazing place. oh trust me I looked all of that up and I I have plans for the gym for the swimming with the dolphins the riding the horses and because I love horses but I love the water but I knew and it was my brother's like why are you picking Jamaica for your birth I was like Y'all ever seen Jamaica? Y'all ever had this food? First of all, I love good food. I love good food, honey. I love the good food. And I have had Caribbean food all my life. I went to Catholic school that was very diverse (laughs) with people from Jamaica, people from, you know, Portugal, people from all different nationalities. And I would be like, oh, what you got for lunch? Can I have that? Oh, nice. So, yeah. and then I went to, when I went to college, it was a lot of people from Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica exchanged to my university. 
So me and some sorrow needed to have a time together. Oh, that's my favorite drink. That Honey. is like our drink there. So Honey, I needed to have me and some some real sorrow oh. <laughs> needed to yeah. have a moment. Oh yeah, some definitely. Real I jerk chicken and, and curry goat needed oh, to yeah, have girl. a moment. Yeah, yeah. Scotty's, that's the first <laughs> place I go when I land in Jamaica because I'm from Montego Bay. And, mm-hmm. that's, and that's, that's where I was work. going, Montego Bay. Oh, that. Yeah. Can I come mm-hmm. home with you? When do you go home again? Yeah, I'll let you know when I'm going again. I'm going again soon. Yeah, because it's like every couple months I get it in my soul, in my spirit. Like I got to go home. <laughs> yeah. Now, does home help rejuvenate you for doing all of the work that you do because you have to take time for yourself? Oh, definitely. The sweetest thing is to be in Jamaica and like, coach my clients while I'm on the beach or uh, there's also you know I consult too so you get your breakthrough call it's just amazing to be like running on the beach and you get a breakthrough call like from South Africa or a woman in Ghana or Nigeria or in Trinidad you know it's just Mm -hmm. it's amazing and yeah, that's what I tell my clients. So whatever your purpose is to, it's again, back to the feminine energy. We are feminine. Our womb space needs time to relax, to breathe, to take in nature. So wherever you're loving, whether it's waterfalls, the mountains, all of that, you have to find some time. I know we're busy and all this stuff, but you have to find some time to go on those nature walks. And it doesn't have to be far. I mean, if you don't, yeah. you know, if, you, if you don't fly, if you're not driving far, just find it in your own little backyard or a friend's backyard. Or America has so many amazing public parks. Yeah. We have amazing public parks. So you could do that too. Yeah, I mean, I live in D.C., so I don't live far from the wharf area where the, you know, the D.C. wharf area is. And I was just telling a friend today, she was like, are you, where are you thinking about moving when you move out of your studio apartment? I was like, I want to be near water. Yeah, I need, she was like, no, no, I keep thinking about something flooding my house. I said, well, sweetie, I I didn't say I had to live on the bottom floor of a condo. No, you don't have to live on the bottom floor, (laughs) ma'am. I just said I needed to look out the window. And see some water because that yeah. is my element. I am a cancer, honey. We do the water. Yeah, water. Yeah, water is water is abundance. You know, yeah. water is clarity. Water is abundance and prosperity. So definitely follow your heart. I wish that for you, Monica. Thank you. Yeah, I I just see myself like I told. You, I said my dream is living in Cali, right on the beach. Ah, right yeah. in San Diego, right on the beach, okay? Ooh, uh, or, the, yeah. or San Francisco, the Bay Area. I want to look out wherever I land and I could be by coastal. I don't care. Yeah. Uh-huh. I can if I can have my house in in in, in Maryland or DC and I can have my, my beach house in Cali. Yes. But wherever either one of those houses are, I want to be mm-hmm. near some water. Definitely. I need to see it. I need to feel Speak it. it into existence. Ma'am, you yeah. see this is happening right now because mm-hmm. I know I will be in that Bay Area of Cali. Oh, definitely. I know so I I'm going to give you a secret tip. Oh, we're getting a the secret tip. Secret I like this. Tip, ladies and gentlemen, listen right now. So whatever you want to manifest, you have to write it down. It's also in the Bible. Let Write down the plan and make it plain. You could do vision board. You could do all of that too, but it's very important. Write it down and always recite it every day if you can, every other day if you can. And just, it will happen. Definitely. It definitely will. Oh, I know this is happening. I see it. It's coming. I am taking the steps to get there and to get to the life that I want. And trust me, it is coming. I see it already. You deserve it because you're a queen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Doing this podcast is just one step. You know, when I I was doing interviews when I first met you, I did not know it would lead to this podcast. And it led to this podcast. That yeah. year that, that we met in 2017, I was just starting the plus report with my manager, Mickey, and the co-executive producer of this podcast. Mm-hmm. We were just starting out. Wow. And I connected with so many people, but we had no clue that it would lead to me having this podcast show. And it did. Wow. So that can, I'm, it probably will lead you to LA. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've got to get to Cali. I went once for a conference for my nine to five job. That was the one place I went. That was like, I, I don't have to go back home. <laughs> so where are you originally from? I'm right. from 
Maryland. I look born, born and, and raised Maryland. in the DMV. Yeah. Born and raised, but honey, give me there some water, and then I love seafood. You know, you come from yeah. the DMV, you come from the DMV. We eat shrimp, melon, blue crabs, fish. Oh, all the, yeah, love yeah. a good seafood, honey. Yeah. I will eat it out the ocean. Now I got to take yeah. some old bay when I go to the the West Coast. They all obviously they don't know what that is, but I do. But uh-huh. <laughs> but no, <laughs> they, right? I've had some seafood in Seattle, and I was like, where's the old bay? And they were oh, like, no. what? And I was like, so crab cakes don't have obey? Like, what? So it uh-huh. bothered me a little bit. So I got to take it. But uh-huh. I've, I've been to Seattle. I've been to Cali. I've been to Colorado. I've been, nice. I went to school in South Carolina. I've been to Florida. Been on parts of Louisiana. You know, I've been different places. But when I say I went to San Diego and I went over Coronado Beach and Ooh. I was like, I, saw, oh. I walked through the neighborhoods by myself the houses and then yes. I got to Coronado Beach and I was like so which one of these houses is mine oh yeah I just knew and all I, I'll talk to people I'm like I could retire in San Diego people are like not Florida I'm like no Cali honey yeah Cali yeah I want definitely. I don't want to go to Florida I've been to Florida but yeah that ain't where I want to retire I want to go to Cali yeah in California yeah I want to yeah. go to Cali girl it, it's gonna happen definitely yeah. you're speaking it into existence um, and i'm sure write it down do all of that and before you know it you know it's not i always tell my clients it's not we are not supposed to try to figure out how it's gonna happen where i'm gonna get the money from who is gonna do it no just write it down and watch god work and you'll be surprised you know sometimes i'm gonna give you one quick story again if we have time. No, we have time. We all, we have time because I need you to inspire these people. So, uh, you know, I told my agent, listen, I want to work with Oprah. I want to be on Oprah's. Um, oh, I'm so show. glad you're touching on Oprah. This is my <laughs> girl. The, girl, she's my inspiration. So come on with the Oprah. So I said to him, like, maybe 10 years ago, like right, the, the last season of Oprah's show. And I'm like, Yo, I'm a model, like, I need to get on a show, like, all the top models are on our show, all of this, and then it's like, all right, I'll try to find a way, but then we heard that the show was going to end, and I was like, oh, man, I guess that's not the way, but in the back of my mind, I was like, I know, God, that I was supposed to work for Oprah, like, something is going to happen, so, like, two years passes, and I'm like, you know, modeling doing my thing, and then my agent, he calls me one day, and he's like, Hey, Trisha, I know it's one of your goals, your dreams to work with Oprah. They just called, the old magazine just called, and they're looking for standing models. And I was like, what's that? How do you explain? He was like, they're looking for a model to actually do all the light setups. Like, you're you're going to have to be like her doll. Like, you know, mm-hmm. put on all the dresses, pose in front of the camera for the magazine cover. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's super exciting. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I was like, do you get to be her? And he was like, I don't think so. Most of her standing models don't get to meet her. And I'm like, okay, hey, I'm still, I'm still in there. Yeah. So me and Wally Monica, I go on this casting three years in a row, almost like two times, four times a year. And, you know, the last year, it was like the January of going into the fourth year. And I was getting pissed. I was like, yo, like, they know me. I'm a fit model. My body stays the same. Right. I feel like they're using me. Like, they just want me to try on stuff. And I was getting really nasty and bitchy and caught up in my head. You know, and my agent was like, don't let your ego do that to you. So this is another Mm. thing that I teach my clients. That ego, you have to learn how to balance that ego, kick out the ego sometimes, because sometimes with the ego, we lose our dreams. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you yeah. don't have that mentor, that manager, that agent, that spiritual mom or whosoever is in your life, sometimes to put help put your ego in check, that coach, you could lose what's for you, yeah. just to say that. So he kind of put me back in line. He was like, listen, this is your dream. This is what you always wanted. Just go on the casting. Like, stop. So I go and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Trisha. So I'm vibrant, loving, all that. I don't show any, you know, thing like I'm mad or anything. But I'm behind my head. I'm like, mm-hmm, like, okay, this again. So I get out of the Hearst building on 50-something Street in, in Manhattan. And I take the subway because I have another fitting and I'm rushing off and I get out of the subway and my phone literally is like blowing up. I'm like, what? 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 
<laughs> but it was like, Trisha, they just booked you for Oprah's favorite things cover for the December cover. Oh my God, you got it. Oh my God, Monica, I screamed so loud. Like, ah. I was like on the top of my lungs in the middle of the city. <laughs> and then I get to set because it was like the next week. Oh my God. So I get to set. And literally, there's five different designers, high-end designers, Bagley Mushka, Versace, Vera Wag, like mm. all these top designers, because she's wearing, if you know her magazine cover for the December favorite cover, she's always in a gown. Yes. So there's five different top designers, and they're all in different rooms because they the casting directors can't let them see each other. So they're shuffling me to all these different rooms. I'm trying on all these different gowns. The jewelry people, like, the security guard is like right next to me. I'm wearing like jewelry that's like over like $2 million. Oh I'm, my like, God. I'm like taking the pictures with all these gifts and all this. I have to pose and all this stuff. And then when I get home, I look up the photographer. The photographer is one of the top photographers of the world. Oh my God. So, I, I'm letting, so this is another lesson learned. Sometimes we want things when we want it and we think we're ready for it, but it's not your time. Because I look back now and I, you know, I work with them straight for eight, nine seasons every year. And I look back now, I said three years prior when I was like miserable, I was like, they know me, all this stuff. There's no way I could have produced and be that, that bold, confident, sassy, badass model yeah. at that set that day. I wouldn't have known what I was doing three years prior to that. No. So I'm telling you, you just got to keep in preparation. Let go of that ego. Mm -hmm. And I see that so many now with fellow models now too. And, you know, other models, I coach models too, celebrities, social media people, influencers. And I've seen that. And sometimes I look and I'm like, yo, I've worked with Oprah Winfrey. Do you know who this lady is? I mean, ma'am, not billion. Okay. Billion. Uh, billion dollar right. lady i and mean let me tell you, monica she's one of the most humble women i know i simply love so okay so oprah's my inspiration for all of like when i do interviews i think about her because i sat i remember when oprah started her her talk show okay i'm 40 years old so i remember yes and my grandmother she had her shows and oprah we and as a young kid you see this black woman who is full-figured sitting on the interview and i'm looking at her like girl you got the dream then she's in these movies classics color purple women of brewster place she is iconic and oh my gosh oprah like her garden just I, everything about her i love this woman. to top it off i get to meet oprah not once but a couple of times and i hear through the rumor mill that I'm one of the only standing models that really got to meet her and like wow. kind of talk to her. Like she calls me Miss Trisha. I call her Lady O, you know, all that stuff. And I mean, this woman is super humble for all her achievements, everything that she has done, not to say at all about the money, all this stuff. And it's just so inspirational to see her on set because which other celebrity you know, even if they're not high level like that, she even comes to her own fittings. Like, which other celebrity sometimes does that? She yeah. comes in the day before, perhaps. I mean, just you know what? She's, she's, she's humble about her work. She appreciates the work that she does. And she understands her mission and her light that she shines on the world. That's what it is. She understands it. And when you understand it and how powerful that is, you don't abuse it. You see no. that rise and fall of so many people because they've climbed that ladder so fast and they don't even take the time to realize where they are and who they are and why they are. Mm -hmm. That they that they some they fall because that confidence just shots mm -hmm. down because you get yeah. that it's almost like a drug. You get it and you want that fast hit all the time and yeah. you don't take time for the ebb and flow of your life mm -hmm. and then balancing it. Yeah, because one thing I remember one day, because who she is on television, that's who she is when you're around. And even we were on set and she would say, you know, to know your, you have to know your anointing. You have to know your purpose. You have to know who you really are. And until you do that, you are not going to be living. Oh my God. A light you, honey, 
is she's right because you're not going to be living you're going to be surviving yeah and you don't want to be just surviving you want to live and yeah. i learned that through therapy i just went i just finished therapy for a year and a half with like oh my that's great congratulations i thank you i love my therapist she's been she's worked wonders she's put so many people spiritual teachers in my life she's even a spiritual teacher but that's what she says like you were living in survival mode because yeah. of you know things that transpired in life and yeah. when, when people think of trauma they think of something like so much that has to that does you don't think think about the choices you made that caused you some trauma yeah too. and then you're constantly living in survival mode trying to get out of that instead of forget, learning how to forgive yourself asking for forgiveness from god from the divine and getting through that healing and then moving through life in a less survival mode, but in a living mode. Yes. And that's what I, you know, that's the main objective to why I love coaching women one-on-one, -on -one, why I'm so passionate about that, because until you know that you tap into your purpose and know who you are, where you're coming from, where you're going, all of that. Because let me give you a tip about being around an energy divine woman like Oprah when you stand beside her and when you look at her she's not standing by herself mm. her ancestors are there with her ma'am yeah okay so if you don't know how to drop that ego if you don't know how to tap into your inner beauty your inner core where you're from who you are your your true authentic self, you're never going to go anywhere. Never. The audience, she has spoken so much right there in that moment about why Oprah is who she is, but also why Trisha is who she is <laughs> and why she's able to do this work. So you guys, I want you to reach out to Trisha. So Trisha, please let them know how they can reach out to you, how they can get into, how these women can get into this program or how they can share it with their friends that they think need this program. So of course, Monica, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's been awesome, but a great chat. I don't feel like this was an interview, of course. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, but I mostly coach women. Of course, uh, you could reach me at my on my Instagram. I am Trisha Campbell because Instagram is a thing now, of course. And of course, Facebook, just look up Trisha Campbell. And of course, I have my private Facebook group, which is Confidence Queens. So I'm sure we'll put all the links, right? Yes, we so will. We put all the links in show notes. We will put that, uh, we will tag you on Instagram and Facebook and make sure that everyone on the audience gets this information so they can get the Confidence Queen coaching so that you can stop surviving and living in that confident truth that you have. Yes. Ah. Yes. All right. As always, loves, thank you so much for listening to Tea Time with Monica. Bye, loves. Bye.